Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always super duper thrilled to have you. So I am very, very excited to show you the first painting I have completed in 2019. Woohoo! I have a few more in the works. I tend to work on my paintings in batches, but this one is the first one that is totally, totally done right now. And I am calling this piece pinch me because I don't know for some reason it just feels like a dreamscape um, I this is a, actually my hand I took this photo reference at my old place um, back in Palolo Valley it's still here in Hawaii but in uh, Palolo Valley and this was a plant that was at my neighbor's house and the Sun was just shining one day and it just was coming through and all these shadows and I just you know literally stuck my hand up and snapped a few photos with my phone it was so gorgeous um, however I forgot to ask what kind of plant it is so I actually do not know Know what kind of plant this is if anybody has any um, ideas or whatever please feel free to drop them in the comments below but um yeah today I'm very excited I'm gonna paint this whole thing for you and I'm gonna show you um, a bit of the acrylic pour resin because this has actually got three layers so there's um, the painting then there's three layers of these little bulbs coming out and then I've also got a couple of actual live insects in there like a wasp and something else some kind of other thing with a stinger but I don't kill any of the insects, I just find them. But yeah, it's very exciting to um, incorporate them in my pieces. So anyways, um, without me chattering away too long, I hope you enjoy this. I'm gonna mostly do music, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, kind of my influences and thoughts about this um, painting as well. So hopefully you enjoy it today. Let me know what you think about the format. And yeah, happy 2019. I mean, I know we're a few weeks in, but I don't know, something about this year feels extra fresh refresh. So I love you guys, Mwah. thank you for being here. If you learned something, if you have fun, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and it makes sure that your wonderful, wonderful self keeps coming back. See you later, enjoy. So as I was saying, this piece actually came about very organically. It really was just a happy accident that I happened to notice these gorgeous plants casting all of these incredible dapple shadows everywhere. And as I was saying, it's my hand. It's kind of funny. You can sort of tell in my artwork, usually, not always, but usually if the painting is featuring me or a part of my body, then it's sort of a spur of the moment, happy accident. Oh, I stumbled upon something glorious. Whereas if you see a model or something like that in one of my paintings, a friend, something like that, then you're mostly going to see works that I've planned out. I never really thought about it that way, but usually when I see like, oh my God, look at that shadow. It's incredible. I need to get that right now. Oh my gosh, who's around? Oop, here's Kaylee with the selfie. All right. I'm not gonna lie, this painting was definitely a bit of a challenge. Our eyes and brains are naturally programmed to understand which way light is shining and which way shadows are cast. So when I am sitting here painting and basically removing all of the boundaries between top and bottom, back and forth, side to side, it definitely at times looked incorrect while I was painting it. And this often happens to my paintings. It's not uncommon for me to paint something that I think, oh, the skin tone is off or, oh, something is skewed. And I just kind of keep mustering through, trusting my drawing, trusting my skin tones. And by the end, it comes around really well. Like for example, this one I felt was a, almost too yellowish green, especially in the highlights. But that was the way the photo looked. And of course it's because it was the reflective light off of the light green bulbs that was doing that color. So this didn't quite look right to me while I was painting, but I decided to trust my initial instinct, trust my initial paint mixes and keep mustering through. And by the time this painting was finished, 
it was exactly what I needed it to be. Trust yourself. So as I mentioned, the abundance of yellow and green in the highlights as a result of the reflection of the green bulbs all over the hand, so too it's a good idea to add in a little bit of blue and purple from the background tone. Now the background is actually aerosol, but I was able to match it pretty closely. And what this does by bringing in highlights and lowlights from surrounding area is it makes a more unified piece. You should definitely always try to do this within your own works. If you can bring in some sort of tone in the background and make it repeat in the foreground or possibly even a reflective light on one side of the subject somehow finds its way on another part of the painting panel. It doesn't even have to be on the same subject, but if you can repeat colors even slightly, it brings the unification of the piece to about a 10. In case you're wondering what I'm painting on, this is actually one of my own homemade oil primed Belgian linen mounted on wood panels that I like to make. I have an instruction video on that. It's really not difficult and you can use canvas or linen to make your own panels. I love these because since they're on wood, they never stretch out or get loose, even when I tend to put my hand on the piece, which I know you're not supposed to do, but sometimes I do anyways. Oops. Here we go, now you can really see the similarity between the highlights on the bulbs and the highlights in the hand. This really helps to unify the piece. It makes it feel like it's all one scene, which of course it is. even realize how much our eye takes in reflective light. Everything basically reflects on everything. Just remember that as a rule of thumb. There should always be a mutual reflection going on within your works. And ta-da, first layer is done. So exciting. I cannot wait to see the three-dimensionality pop out in this piece. And now on another little scrap of my oil-primed Belgian linen, I am creating these green bulbs, which I will cut out and place between the layers of acrylic resin to really give that crazy pop. I 
I have a past tutorial if you would like to see how I am making these little shadow box frames too. And now it is time to add my creepy crawlies. I actually opted to hammer a few nails into my piece in order to sort of prop the bugs up, which let me tell you, if you want to do something incredibly nerve wracking, spend countless hours doing a painting and then take a hammer and nail to it. Oh my goodness. But I felt like it was the best way to have these bugs really prop out. It's a good idea to glue this kind of thing in place because the acrylic resin is definitely hard to control once you pour it in and things slide around for sure. So I didn't actually film my first two layers of acrylic resin pour. Each one was a little under a quarter of an inch thick and in between you place your objects and glue each one. Now you can see I'm about to do my third layer and this is going to be the final layer of all of my little bulbs so I've glued them in place let it dry and pour the acrylic resin you're going to want to give each layer of acrylic resin around 24 to 36 hours to fully cure before doing the next one and make sure that you have your heat gun handy you can see I'm hosing it down with the heat and it really makes such a huge difference you actually want to keep an eye on your piece for a little while because bubbles will slowly come up for about 15 or 20 minutes Yay, so exciting to see this piece out in nature where it practically belongs. Thanks for being here today, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and come on back and see me.